Uh, welcome to another edition of DXB today. Hope you've had a great day here in the wonderful city of Dubai. Consoles at the ready. Is Dubai, is the UAE a hub for e-gaming and e-sports already? Is it making a play for being not just a regional but a global hub? Well, that is a question we look to answer for you tonight. Here is what's coming up. Katie heads down to True Gamers to learn more about the region's emerging gaming scene. And it looks fun. Plus, our very favorite musician, Jay Abbo, is performing for us on tonight's show. Gamers, do consider yourself an e-computer game. It's an interesting one, this one, isn't it? Um, and, and this is the one that we're going to start showing our sort of, it's the generation game of many, because I was probably just at that sort of time where, 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 where computer games turned into e-game. It became an industry, if you like. And therefore, I will choose my words carefully throughout the next 60 minutes to not make myself <laughs> look too old and silly. But there is one thing you cannot deny. It is a huge booming and expanding industry. It absolutely is. And I think that everyone always thinks if you're a gamer, you're on, you've got your, your console and you know, anyone who's playing a game on their phone, you've got that Candy Crush, you're killing some time, you've got your Candy Crush, or I don't know what other mobile games you might play. I'm personally Tetris. a, t I love Tetris. I wish I still had my Game Boy. I play Tetris with my kids and I play um, Mario Kart. Mario Kart's amazing. But yeah, you know, we're going to be talking a lot about women as well in the gaming industry, which I'm very excited to delve into. What about you, Amy? I feel like you've never played a game in your life. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I think maybe the last game that I played was like Sims. I yeah. mean, in that's... this lifetime. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, no, I, d I even like what you're saying, Candy Crush, like, not really. No. I mean, if shopping was an e-game, like maybe I could get on board. There is, there, there, there. Okay, I'm sure, there are games. <laughs> okay, so th this is a platform I need this to be is exploring. Shocking, Katie, uh, Amy, oh my goodness, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> me with the Katie and Amy. She's like, everyone calls me Katie, and then here I'm calling you Katie. So, Amy, does it shock you? What a big, massive industry and discussion this has become. Um, yes, it does. Because for me, like, it's, I mean, it's playing a game, and it's not even like a real physical game, like a game of football or something like that. But now I, I've seen that like e-gaming is kind of moving into the real world as well. Like there's things that you can do like activities that you're doing on your gaming, but you get points for it from doing it in real life or something. I mean, this is my knowledge. Like, Well, no, I'm really glad you've taken that position because we've put together a who's who, an all-star cast uh, throughout the show today to try and uh, convince us otherwise, if mm. you like, because there are those out there that, that, that don't understand the growth of the industry at the moment. And yet you look at the investment from the UAE, from the region as a whole at the moment into this sector, uh, and you can see that it is obviously a play for the future. So. We are here to discuss all different facets of it, from the sporting side, to the inclusivity side, to the uh, education side, to the how do you make a bit of money out of it side as well. So we'll look at it from And it had to be in that voice, of course. Always, you know. Yes. Always. To be the old <laughs> so do you play any dealer. games, Tom, or your kids? Uh, no, I, sorry, I, I, my, 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 my son is a gamer. Yeah. Um, he plays a lot. Um, it's very difficult to get him off his console. Yeah. I sort of peek over his shoulder every now and again. Yeah, I've got my husband's a serious gamer, but my kids are obsessed with Minecraft now. My son, my, my five-year-old son has been building a roller coaster, like a theme park, and it's so intricate and it's really impressive. So uh, there's no limitations. Incredible. Well, to shine a little bit of light, professional light on us, we've got a guest co-host joining us in the studio. So let's find out who that is. Hi, I'm Lucy Chow. I'm an author. I'm so excited to co-host today. Come along with me. Lucy will join us right here in just a little bit, but first, Katie went down to True Gamers, the most technologically advanced gaming cafe in Dubai to take a look at some of the e-sporting activities they have to offer. Check it out. The gaming community is huge here in Dubai. So I've come down to Blue Waters Island to check out True Gamers. And I also want my nephews to think I'm cool and I need to learn more. Let's go. I'm with the COO of True Gamers, Artem. Thank you so much for inviting us down. First of all, tell us more about True Gamers. Thanks for visiting us and True Gamers is eSports club network and ecosystem. Now we are at the club in Blue Waters mm -hmm. and we have more for more in Dubai. Let's 
talk about the tournament side of things because I know you've got two VIP rooms here that are, I mean, strictly for the tournament side of things. I mean, it's, again, it's such a huge market. Are they just here? Is it global tournaments? Tell me more. We have up to 100 simultaneous players across our clubs and our vision. And I think in January, there would be the first cross Emirates tournament, Sharjah versus Dubai. Ooh. And our goal is to make regular cross Emirates tournaments because we are opening a club in Abu Dhabi and also we will do regional tournaments. So for example, Saudi versus UAE and all of that. Something that shocked me when I first came in here was the robo dogs. Why do you have robo dogs exactly? We are extremely focused on the user experience at our clubs and want to add as much wow effects as possible. So it's also a part of our vision and our concept at, and at our clubs. All sounds fascinating. I want to check out the whole experience, if that's okay, and then maybe order some food from the Robo Dog. Yeah, please feel free. <laughs> right, let's go. I can't win all of them. Whether you are a weekend gamer, whether you're a pro gamer, or whether you're just getting started, make sure you check out True Gamers right here in Dubai. Knowing how competitive Katie Overy is, I would have <laughs> loved to have seen some of those sessions down there at True Gamers. Now, let's introduce you to our co-host today, thought leader and an author contributing to the world of esports and innovation through her book, Changing the Game, redefining the role of women in the gaming world. She is a Women in Games ambassador. Please welcome Lucy Chow to the show. Great to have you with us. Thanks, Tom. Really Great to be here. To join us. And I suppose I'm going to go back to that original point is, is, is that you know, we've been here for, for, for many years. We've seen this, this city, this part of the world evolve yeah. in the last uh, few generations and decades and at pace as well compared to other parts of the world. Is it fair to consider Dubai, not Dubai, the UAE and mm -hmm. certainly the GCC in this region as one of the, the hubs for, for e-gaming, for e-sports around the world at the moment? Yeah, no, it, it is now, as you know, um, and to your point earlier, the investment that's going in, um, whether it's from the UAE or from Saudi. I mean, one of the things that really made me excited was when esports became part of the national agenda of these two countries. Um, and if it's part of the national agenda, there's a, then that's what's being measured, that's what's being focused on. And you probably saw the announcement yesterday, uh, the Dubai program for gaming 2033, What's involved in that? Uh, a, a billion dollars worth of additional GDP mm. for just Dubai by 2033. 30,000 more jobs. Mm. Um, and uh, there's so much more that goes along with that. And what are- It's not just the cash, is it? It's not just no, the investment. It's no. the regulation, it's the regulatory a framework that's absolutely. going in place, et cetera. Yes. Setting up ministries to sort of govern this as well. Yes. And, and we're moving a lot of that ahead here. So there's global gaming bodies and, and some of them are based here. Um, and so the focus is on talent, uh, it's on tech uh, and it's on content. Now on that note, I know you focus on women in the gaming industry and Lucy, I'm really excited to have you here <laughs> for that reason. Now I personally, even though I'm not a gamer, I'd say I'm not necessarily a gamer myself, I have noticed a huge shift in the last few years. So we're talking what, 50% of women are gamers. So yes. yeah, it's pretty yes. even. But then when it comes to the actual developers and the people that are involved in decision making, it's fairly unbalanced. What, what are we looking at? What percentages? Yeah, here? no, it is very unbalanced. Um, so when women in games was, Created the nonprofit that I'm part of um, in 2009, maybe six percent of the industry um, was women, and I, t the latest figures 2020, 22 percent are women. So it's still there's still a, a long, long ways to go 
So I know I'm, I think I mentioned this to you, which is I noticed in Mortal Kombat was a big one for me that the there was a there was a shift in the way the female characters yeah. were dressed, how they were dressing. And again, is that because it went from being feeling a little exploitative to feeling a bit more representative now, a bit more reasonable in terms, especially relative to how the male characters are dressed. And I guess that's the goal, right? We want women there representing it, representing us and making it all feel a bit more well-rounded. Yes, no, uh, yeah, that's a fabulous point because how do you get more women into the space? Um, you have to have more characters that, that are women in games because in, in the past in games, there weren't a lot of, of female uh, protagonists. Um, I'm seeing moms now too, which is great. That's hey, right. Moms. That's right. Um, <laughs> and, and grandparents, and and so you definitely want to have more female representation in the actual content, but you also want to have more female developers, um, and that's also why you're seeing um, the the characters becoming like more realistic and um, yeah, evolve. inclusive, inclusive, and inclusive. involved. Yeah. Incredible. So, Lucy, can you tell us a little bit about your book, Changing the Game, and you know what we can expect as readers to discover inside the book? Yeah, I, I think I've got everything and the kitchen sink on that title, <laughs> <laughs> and so that was deliberate because it was. I, I really wanted to take the stigma out of gaming. Yeah. And it's sort of all the hats that I wear. Yeah. You know, I'm not. I'm not a gamer either. And so I always say the best way to write a book is to go out and find. 30 subject matter experts, 38 to be precise, around the world, they each wrote a chapter. And so the whole point of the book is for anyone with any hat, you know, if you're a broadcaster, a parent, uh, to pick up the book, read one or two chapters and say, oh, so you're looking at the content of the chapter. It might be about women in games, it might be investing, it might be about education in the space. And then you look at who wrote the chapter. And it could be someone that has a PhD in geography. It could be someone that's a psychologist. It could be um, an astronaut. And you're like, well, how, how, what do they have to do with gaming? And so the whole point is that it is tied to the future of work. Um, it's a part of all of our lives, because mm -hmm. you talked a bit about the statistics of, of how large this industry is, it's larger than the entertainment, the movie industry and the sports industry <laughs> combined in terms of eyeballs, larger. Yeah. So the, we got to stand up and take notice. I mean, I think that's I to get involved, insane. Don't I? Is that not insane? <laughs> it is. A, it, that's what makes combined. you take notice. I mean, that's the thing. It's a huge technological achievement. But why else do you think it's so important for us? And it's so important for our children as well. Is it the cultural representation? Is it the storylines? Is it, I was talking about how my son is learning how to become an architect and an engineer and like it, awesome. it is it is fascinating so what do you think is the most some of the most important things that we are maybe not taking into consideration yeah, when no. it comes to this field uh, what was that Tom? jobs isn't it yeah absolutely jobs i mean if we if we, if we talk about the fact that and we talk about it a lot 50 percent of jobs in the future we have no idea what they are right they haven't been invented yet i guarantee you part of it has to do with this sector yeah. i right you we have we're we're putting blinders on if we're not opening our minds to understanding the relevance of this sector yeah. to future proofing our kids and, and ourselves. We need to be open minded to see what skill sets are we lacking, mm -hmm. you know, that 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 are going to make us, uh, you know, maybe obsolete if we're not following trends. Future proofing kids, as you say, future proofs, they're in the yeah. workplace of the future as well, as well, yes. as you say, take on those that, That's a huge focus of, of mine, the future. Uh, and I, I needed to mention very quickly, um, again, taking the stigma out of games, you know, um, and I love the fact that you talked about architecture. I mean, um, you know, the, the, the Chicago Architectural Association uses Minecraft to teach their architects. Isn't that amazing? Right? Um, in June of 2020, the FDA approved a game to treat ADHD. They approved a game, a video game, and that's so much better than pumping pharmaceuticals into Absolutely. a child. Lucy, we're so glad to have you with us, and we're so glad that you're gonna stick around to help us ask all the questions and get all this other information, keep, keep our audiences intrigued, so don't you go anywhere. But now how about we find out who's gonna be playing us out on tonight's show. Let's take a look. What's up, everybody? I'm Jay Abo, and this is my song, Movie, right here on DXB Today. Coming up, we find out more about content creation in the gaming world, so don't go anywhere.